Pencil number 171A, Pennsylvania Railroad Machinery Examination for Locomotive Firemen. Instruction for Locomotive Firemen in Part 3, Chapter 16. Qualification and duty for the engineer general operation of locomotive. An engineer must, uh, qualification an engineer must be main, main, um, be a main of good of the cl habits, trustworthy, faithful, intelligent. He must be understood by the rules and obey them. His response for the engineer's performance must not only be skilled in its care and handling, but must know what to do in the case of the breakdown and emergency duty. The first duty for the engineer will take in the charge of the engine and see that there is insufficient water for the load, but operating with the gauge cocks and seeing what comes out of the drip pipes. He must know that they are open and working freely and examining the testing should then be made with the water glass, the firebox flues, and should be examined for the leaks of the given special attention to the crown sheet and bolts and must know the injectors and feed water for the pumps are working properly. Um, while the engine is being prepared, the following inspection should be made. The locomotive of the tender should be inspected for the defects, seeing that all the important bolts and nuts and tamper pins and cutter pieces are properly applied. See that there are no old, loose bolts, nuts, tools, and other material lying on the running boards and frames, etc. The sand pipes are clamped in proper position in the sanders are operating. They examine the grates and the ash pan. See the steam heater, the contactor at the rear of the tender is properly hung up. The blow, the out, blow out the brake pipe steam heat later line at the rear of the tender. And check all the turn valves known as the proper. The valves are wide open and close the condition is require see that the locomotive has fully supplied with the coal with the water sand tools etc test break in the air signal whistle try the water scope see the water heater lines and open the cold weather taste um, the whistle and the bell ring are in good condition the proper reverse gear is properly lubricated and works freely in all positions general operating level lo locomotive before an engine is started the cylinder cocks must be open the brakes light apply with the throttle open and the steam to mid the alternating the both ends of the cylinder slowing moving the reverse lever back and forth until the dry, dry steam appears at the all cylinder cocks the warm up this warms up the cylinders and removes all accumulated water that may be in the cylinders during this operation. The throttle should be open slightly, just cracked. If too much for the steam is permitted to enter the superheater with accumulated water in the units of the driven with a great force against with the war turn the bends that may cause them into leak. Water cannot be compressed if the trap in the cylinders when the piston is moving toward the cylinder the head is liable to crack and knock out the of the cylinder head of the crack or the break of the rods or pins damage of the handle pump may not become apparent at once but the parts affected in fracture fracture started may fail at some later turn time. When starting the train, the first lever should be um, not in full gear in the danger of the greatest pull for the rapidly heating of the cylinders by proper oil distribution. The engine should be started slowly until all the slack is out of the strain jerking. The train may result in pulling out of the braking of the draw heads in the cars. When tolling, the long train care should be taken to in case, in closing the valve and throttle to ease off slowly to allow the slack and, and train to gradually run in. Slipping over the divers must be avoided as it not only tenders upset the fire of the cause of waste in the rebuilding but and wears out of the tire rails and may result in serious damage in the running gear. It also re results in reducing the pulling power of the engine and rough handling of the train. A slipping engine may not, must not be caught on the sands nor um, should the stands be exposed. It shan't be used on one side of the end only. This may cover the rod pins and axles to break. Sand should only be used in sufficient quantity to prevent slipping. Making stops and when descendant grades for the throttle must not be shown suddenly. Must be closed to a point where the sufficient steam will then submit it to prevent carbonization of lubrication. Also to hold sniffing um, valves to their seats and the reverse layer lever should be regulated according to the type of the gear and conditions. If for any reason the water in the boiler cannot be maintained at a safe level, the fire must be deadened or drawn. Locomotives can be abused um, by the failure to properly lubricate, failure to use cylinder um, cocks to know the cylinder at the free of the water before the locomotive is removed. Care to move much water than the boiler, working the locomotive is unnecessarily hard, reversing the wind steam in the cylinders, especially when the di drivers or brakes are set. Slipping of the drivers, using sand on only one side only, using sand when the slipping without closing the throttle, and not using sand when it sh should be used. Our right, questions on chapter 16. What are the qualifications in general that the engineer should pose, pose, um, possess? Um, what is the first duty of the engineer when the taking the charge of the engine? What is the inspector should be made with the engine? What should be done before the engine of the start? How should the throttle be operated when the warming up of the blowing water out of the cylinders? What is the liable to occur if the engine is moved with the water into the cylinders? How should the engine be started to avoid jerks of the train? How should the throttle be closed with the hauling of the long train? How should the slipping of the drivers be avoided? How should the sanders be used? How should the throttle and the reverse lever be angled, handled when making the stop and descending grades? What should be done if the water in the boiler level cannot be maintained at a safe level? How can the locomotive be abused? Chapter 17, Throttle throttle valves. The following are the two general types of throttle valves used in the, in, on our locomotives. Dome throttle and multiple valve throttle. 
All right, your dome throttle. The throttle is valve is located with the highest part of the dome on the boiler figure one, page seven, so that it may be supplied with the dry stream. The purpose of this is regulated with the flow of the stream on the boiler to the cylinders. Most of our locomotives are equipped with the piston and stem the throttle valve figure 48, page 97. This this film throttle consists of the following main parts. Upright pipe, piston stem, which contains the small valve, main valve, throttle valve position. Um, the small valve is used for the starting and drifting of the main valve begins, begins to open when the throttle is levered to pull below the, the main position of the quadrant. Operation when the throttle valve is, is pulled out of three knots at the starting with the high speed drafting and the small valve opens permitting the steam to pass through the valve of the throttle valve piston and then try then the drive pipe on its way to the cylinder when the throttle level is pulled out to the mid position the, on the collar on the piston stem the contamination. Containing the small valve moved the up at the end of the opening of the battle the throttle of the valve piston showed up with the flow of the steam throughout this position, the murmurance, the pressure of the steam of the act of the of the bottom of the throttle valve piston balanced with the main valve, so the further opening of the of the throttle valve lever raises the main valve off its seat for the admission of the steam through this valve. Or right, your piston stem thr throttle valve shows the the stem dome, the main valve, the throttle valve position, the small valve, the piston stem, the upright pipe, the dry pipe. And also it goes into um, the piston stem, it goes into the throttle lever um, pulled over three notches or starting and pushing high speed drifting for too low speed drifting, two or one notch may be used when throttle lever is pulled out or mid position on, high, on quadrant or main valve begins to open. Same issue when the cylinder cockpit engine is standing with the throttle shut off with lubricating closed with the indication of leaking throttle with the drain pipe. But that may also do, may be due to the steam coming with from the water, which may cause have accumulated in the superheated unit. In this case, it will cease when all the water in the units have evaporated. In the event of a throttle valve becomes disconnected while the valve is closed for the engine and the power list, the system must be obtained. The throttle valve that fails to seat. after the throttle lever is enclosed in position, the engine must be controlled by the reverse lever and it breaks and the steam pressure reduces. All right, American mul multiple valve throttle. The general, since the first steam locomotive was built with the steam dome on the top of the valve valves, been you've been ordered to obtain the steam to drive possible in recent of the years. However, the locomotive boilers has increased in size. The height and steam dome is necessary to decrease. With the result of that, the dome is no longer a suitable place for, the, for throttle. It's also the introduction of superheater added to the considerable steam space between the throttle and the cylinders, resulting in a delayed response to the movement of the throttle. In the view of the box, in the view of the above, it has been concluded that the smoke box location for the most advantage of the position of the throttle in addition to eliminating the disadvantage of the dome throttle with the smoke box throttle has the following advantages. Full use of the additional steam space is afforded with the superheater unit for the dry pipe. The instant response locomotive with the movement of the throttle. Availability superheated steam for the auxiliaries at all times with the result in an economy. Protection of the superheater units. The superheater units are filled with the steam the entire time there's pressure on the boiler. This protects them from heat passing through the flues through the firebox when the throttle is closed. Operation of the valve of the American throttle opening sequence. The sequence for the intervals between the valve movements are established by the graduated contours of the cams of the camshaft. The main valves other than A valves are identical and can no instruction but are assigned to the designation B, C, and D, etc., which relate with the position of each valve of the throttle with the sequence in which each valve is set in position, set in motion, opening of the throttle figure 48A, 48B on page 99. The number of the main valves vary from the side of the boiler range from the 3 to 7. Figure 4 B A is the throttle header and is the throttle handle examine is assembly. One main valve, one A, A valve, two B pilot valve, three camshaft, four pilot valve with some seat, five main valve seat, five A, A valve seat, six main valve cover, seven pilot valve cover, eight cam bushing, nine A cam plugging bearing, nine B cam bearing, um, camshaft bearing plug, ten camshaft bearing, twelve sh stuffing box packing steam journal. 12A ladder and ground, 13 stuffing box gas joint, um, stuffing box gland gas joint, 14, 15 main valve cover gasket, 16 pilot valve cover put gasket, <coughs> 17 camshaft bearing plug, 18 camshaft bearing bushing gasket, 18 camshaft bearing bushing bearing gasket, 21 camshaft bell bearing, 22 camshaft sleeves, 23 camshaft oil ring, 25, 24 camshaft oil ring retaining plug, 25 camshaft nut, 26 oil cup, 26A lubricator, 27 lubricator extension, 52, sorry, um, 52 stuffing box, stuffing box gland C steam joint, 53 stuffing box gland flange. 
All right, and then figure 48B, a picture there in the stuffing box. The first move in the throttle opener operating left with from closed position with open position ready for the pilot valve with the permits to steam to pass for the upper chamber with the throttle to the balancing chamber with the bottom of the main valves are uh, then in balance further the bo bottom of the main valves are then in balance for the further pro movement of the throttle lever opens A of the valve of the valve to the established intervals by the valves B, C, D, and etc. Flow steam from the upper chamber to the bed chamber then to do the steam pipe cylinder begins at the moment of the moment and the A valve is open increasing the volume as the other valves are subsequently set in motion until the throttle is opening is attained. When the throttle lever is moved from the opening of the position to closed position, the valve will close in the reverse order of the pilot valve will closing last. As the throttle lever approaches the closed position, the lower side of each of the cam exerts the force upon the bottom of the portion of the valve and close each of the valve tightly. Leakage of the past balancing piston permits escape from the steam from the balancing chamber. Causes for hard working throttle. Binding of the throttle region due to the misalignment throttle connecting rods tightly to end guides for the moving part of the rigid not free with the move readily. The faults are corrected by properly adjusting the rigid, rig, rigging. Lack of lubricating in the rigging. Four, three packing landing on the clam, camshaft drawn up too tightly. The packing dried out. And four, the excessive end play with the camshaft causing the cams to bind against the valve spindles of the stirrups. Incorrect intervals causing by the wears of the cams or valve. Sixteen, six, excessive clearance between the balancing piston and a balancing piston. Guide and throttle. 390. What is the throttle valve located? Why? 391. What is the purpose of the throttle valve? 392. What are the main parts of the piston stem? The throttle valve. 392. 3. Um, describe the operation of the small valve with the piston stem throat valve. 394. Describe the operation of the main valve with the piston steam throttle valve. 395. What is the end indicated steam issuing from the cylinder cocks when the throttle is shut off with the engine standing? 396. What should be done with it if the throttle valve becomes disconnected while the valve is closed? 397. What should be done if the throttle valve fails to the seat after the throttle lever is in closed in position? 398. What is the multiple valve throttle located? What is the due to the multiple valve throttle consist of? Uh, figure 49 shows the driving box wedge arrangement. Um, shows the frame, the show, the shoe, the face of the driving box, the driving box, at, box shell, the driving box shot, shoe, the pedestal cap, lock nuts, wedge bolt, wedge bolt bracket, and wedge. Chapter 18, driving box to shoes and wedges the driving box for the purpose of supporting the weight of the frames of the boiler on the axle. They are wedged with moving forward with the backward by shoot of the wedges located between the box and jaw of the frame. The chief of the purpose of the shoot of the wedges is keeping the dry axle on the tram. Take up the lost motion between the driving box and the pedestal at the wear of the crowd aggress to prevent the pedestal from the wear. The wedge page figure 49, page 102 is located back with the driving box between the shoe and the pedestal jaw of the frame and the adjustable steel liner that is used. Take up the last motion between the driving box and jaw of the frame. Wedges are adjusted in the following manner. Place the engine over the pitting with having the straight level of the track while the driving boxes are cool. Apply up the driving box to take up the slack between the driving box and the front pedestal leg of the frame. 3. Slack off bulk with locking nuts and with no pressure in the cylinders. Adjust the wedge so that the wedge shoots at 132th inch loose between the box and the wedge. 4. Tighten the lock nuts to be holding wedge in position if it's necessary for the wedge shoots slightly loose. To allow for expansion for the driven box when it was reached with the running heat wedges that are there adjusted to the tight restrict the vertical movement of the driving box interview with the action with the spring this will cause the engine to ride hard and may result with the driving boxes heating excessively driving boxes wedges should be lined when the wedges have been adjusted to the limit of the travel determined by the length of the wedge bolt the lowest mo loss of motion still appear with the between the box and the shoe the broken wedge bolt may cause the wedge to be forced up so tight that it restricts the vertical movement of the driving box in the jaw of the frame this causes the engine to ride hard and the box to run hot a condition of the kind may be remedied by running the wheel over the block and the middle block is used to care of the most be taken the stand in the position where there will be no possibility of injury from being struck by the block if it should fly out. Driving box that begins with the heat of the excessively made due with the various causes that must be cased for the end cause of the lack of lubrication from the grease of the pad being struck away from the journal. The trouble may be being overcome the tapping in with the grease pad indicated by the, the expanded below. The bottom of the cellar with the bar with the force of the grease are added the, up against the journal. Oil should be applied between the driving box with the hub of the wheel without jack of the wheel weight can be taken off the hot driving box by running the wheel involved upon the blocking and by placing the blocking between the top of the frame and the saddle. Run the wheel off the blocking and the weight that the disabled box carried will be placed on the frame of the distributed on the other boxes. 
Question on in chapter 18. What is the purpose of the driving box? How are the driving box held so that they do not move forward or backwards? What is the wedge located? What is for? What are the wedges adjusted? What are the, the effect that is produced when the wedges are adjusted too tight? What should be the driving box wedge the line? What are the trouble may be cut with the broken wedge bolt? What may remedy with this trouble? What precautions should be taken? What is the most unusual cause of the driving box heating excessively? What should be done when the driving box becomes excessively, heating excessively? Chapter 19, Spring Rigging, Driving Wheel Tires. Spring Rigging. The springs are, are for the purpose of the lessening the amount of shock imparted with the frame of the engine may be classed in the shock absorbers. Spring Rigging, figure 50, page 105, consists of the following parts. Saddle springs, hangers, equalizer seats, a grat, gibs, and pin, or pins. The spring are carried out or carried by the saddle equalizer resting with the driving box, but the frames are suspended with the springs and hangers, equalizers, gibs, or pins. Are you for the screwing of the hangers and equalize the weight of the, between the driving boxes? The equalizer is distributed by the one equalizer, but the equalizer trans Transmitting of the shock sustained with one spring to the other spring. Spring rigging is properly equalized when the spring of the hangers are level with the straight, and there must be clearance between the tops of the driving boxes and frames, also between the bottom of the boxes under, and, pedestal, um, ped and, and pedestals. Can the clearance is necessary to prevent the frame of the, uh, from the striking the top of the driving backs and pedestal caps from the striking the from bottom of the driving box? The minimum clearance between the pedestal cap and driving box should be not be less than one inch. Prevent contact which will not knock nuts or bolts or any other part loose causing the engine to ride hard on may result in derailment. Our figure 50 shows the driving spring arrangement. It shows the driving spring arrangement, spring rollers, the spring hanger, wheel, the spring hanger, the side equalizer seat, your side equalizer, the roller, the spring saddle, and the frames, the frame plank, and the gib. In the event of the engine truck spring or the front of the driving spring with the hanger is broke from the examination must be made to see that the pilot clears with the rail properly. If not, in the front end of the engine should be raised with the blocking in the place between the top of the driving box and frame. The spring hanger and the equalizer is broken and the wheels do not rub the boiler and air pipe with such that the pilot clears with the rail of the engine can be run or carefully when necessary the engine frame can be raised off of the driving box without jacks. In the following manner, the block between the frame and the top of the driving box knocks to disable the point running the block wheel with the open on a wedge of the blocking the block between the frame and the top of the driving box at the disabled point that both operations should be repeated if the frame is not raised high enough. Two wheel trailer, tra tra trailer truck not equipped with a coil spring under the pedestal caps must not be within ruin and backward motion if tra trail spring or the hangar should be raked as there is possibility for the truck tra trailer truck with the medium to rail this equipped with the coil springs under the pedestal cap that may be running with the backward motion as the coil spring support the trailer truck when, spring, when a spring or the hangar breaks. Driving wheel tires. Figure 51, page 107. There are applied with the wheels and shrink of the disc consists of having the inside diameter of the tire. The required amount smaller than the wheel of the tire is then heated with the, uh, until it expands larger than the wheel. After it has been applied to the wheel, the cools and it becomes tight and retaining place with held in place by repeats that the rim of the wheel are used as an additional retaining feature. The following procedure is necessary when the event of the tire should break on the other than the front drivers. Figure 51 shows the driving wheel, the cranking pin, the axle, the center um, center balance, and the tire. The disabled wheel must be raised clear of the rail with the running with the up of the wedge of the locking the block between the pedestal cap of the driving box with the disabled wheel block between the between the frame and the top adjacent driving boxes. Four cut out the driver brake. No attempt should be made to raise the front of the driver's wheel clear of the rail. Assistance should be requested so the engine can be properly prepared for the movement. Question number 19. Um, question on chapter 19. What is the purpose of the engine spring? Is the name of the principal parts of the spring rigging? How is the weight of the frames and the boilers suspended with the driving springs? What is the purpose of gibs and pins in the spring rigging? What is the purpose of the equalizer? Well, how can you tell the engine is properly equalized? Well, what is necessary? What is the clearance above the below the driving box necessary? What should be the minimum clearance be between the pedestal cap and driving box? What is the minimum clearance necessary? What should be done with the, if the engine truck spring or, spring, or spring or front driving wheel spring or hanger is broken? What should be done if the spring or hanger with the equalizer is broken? How can the engine frame be raised off of the driving box without jacks? If the trailer spring of the spring hanger should be break on the two-wheel trailer truck, not equipped with a coil springs, with what precautions should be taken? Why? How are the driving wheels to, uh, tires applied to the wheel? What should be done with the value from the wheel tire? Should break on the other and the front drivers? What should be done with the driving wheel tires? Should be break on the front drivers? Chapter 20, um, crank pins and counterbalance pins, crank pins, counterbalance rods and breakdowns. 
Crank pins. Crank pins are applied to driving the wheel for the purpose of supporting the rods which transmit the power from each of the pistons to the main crank with the hand with the lines and each pair of the driving wheels. The engines are said to be on the dead end, dead center when the crosshead at either the front or the back end of the stroke of the crank pins. The rods are on line with the center of the wheels as the engine is on the top quarter of the wheel. The crank pins are directly above the center of the wheels with the center of the crank pins in the vertical line with the center of the axles and on bottom quarter when the crank pins are directly below the center of the axle. When driving wheel the crank pins are not in the same distance apart with the length of the side rods that cause the side rod bushings to bind up on the bi pins when passing center and run out hot this may do may be due to the engine of being out of the tram which means the, uh, the center of the wheels are not in the correct distance apart and the crank pins are on one side of the engine are located 90 degrees to the quarters of the turn apart from the crank pins on the other side this gives the most favorable position of the starting because they when one side stops on the dead center the other sides on the quarter and is in position to exert the minimum maximum leverage which is an engine out of the quarter The side rod, rod, rod will bind on the crank pins when they are passing the quarters, thereby causing the driving wheels to be skid, thus giving the impression of the engine is slipping while the throttle is closed. When throttle, when throttle is, um, when trouble is experienced with a hot pan with the bearing at all stops should be made, the practical clearing of the main track will at the point of where the trains will not be delayed before attempting to correct the defect. Counterplay balance. The effect of the using the arrangement of the pistons, the crosshead, main rod, side rods, to the driving, driving wheels to set up the forces when running the that unless directed, interfere with the smoothing running of the locomotive. These forces are. The forces resulting from the action vary with the resolving parts of the driving wheel with the weight of the least revolving parts, such as the crank pins and the rear end of the mains and side rods, places success weight on side of the wheels and throws them out of balance. To the force resulting from the action of the parts of that being reciprocating to and fro for the movement such as the piston, piston rod, cross heads to the front end for the main rod, the movement of these parts is reversed at the end, end of each stroke. The action of the above the force is neutralized to some extent with the weight called the counterbalance. Figure 51, page 107 of the counterbalance is the cast of this wheel center on the side of the opposite of the crank pin. This thrust is from the unbalanced wheel of the curves to the rapidly high speed, then it becomes heavily blows, which is destructive to the track and is due detrimental to the engine frames and frame bracing and springs. Moving the main rod side rods with the locomotive to destroy the counterbalance it should be handled with slow speed to avoid damage to the track. Main rod, there are three general types of the main rods that are classified according to the construction of the rear end uh, there. Strap end rod, the rod has been separated. Strap is segregated with the main rod with the bolts of the brass made with the half the which have the bearing on the main rod at the crank pin as preventing with the moving lengthwise in the rod of the by the white wedge or key which is adjustment by means of the bolt. Your fork end rod, the arrangement consists of the brass made, brasses, braces made of the in half the blocks on the wedge of a key. The a key bolt with the block is located between the flange of the, and the black bracket. Back br brass contains a set of screws for securing the key. With the key will be grooved uh, for a set of screws. The key bolt passes from the slot into the fork end of the rod. The brasses will um, be held so firmly when the key with the driven between the tapered surface of the key bolt and the drop in the block. Solid end rod. This contains the round floating of the pushing with the in contact with the pain, main pin with the free term of the rod. The strap of the fork end rods should be kept tightly. The key to prevent pounding is necessary to keep with the back end with the brace of the side of the engine on which the work is being done. Should they be placed on the cranking pins, there is upper front and forward and eighth position, position is in this present. Greatest diameter of the piston and uh, pin of the rod at brasses. Rod brasses, um, rod brasses should be reported closed and reproduced when they are key brasses and to brass and still pounding. All right, your side rods. Side rods connect the crank pins with the driving wheel for the transmit to the other driving wheel. Some of the force in part of the main driving wheel from the, uh, the main rod. The section of the side rods that are connected by the knuckling pin, which provide vertical flexibility, thereby relieving up and down bending of the strain onto the side rods. Number of the side rods used for the sideways all within one of the less number of the crank pins. The various section of the name of the quarter with the position shown below. A locomotive with three pair driving wheels has its two section side rod on each side with one nearest to the cylinder called the front section and the other on the back section. Locomotive with four pair driving wheels has three section of the side rods. One next to the first section is called the intermediate section. The last one of the back section. A locomotive with five pair driving wheels has four section of the side rods. One next to the first section is called the front intermediate section, and the between the, this section of the back section is the back interlock intermediate rod. Shit. 
Breakdowns in the event of the breakdown of the locomotive, the most important factor is to clear the track in the shortest possible train. Um, minor damage may occur, but the moving of the locomotive is not considered. But the clearing of the track at the first important for the good judgment must be. But if there is strong possibility of further damage that may occur, but the cause a to total failure, the engine should be not be moved. However, the, even when the quite serious breakdown with the locomotive, if moved slowly, can often be run to the siding with the comparative safety. Breakdowns can be largely prevented due to inspection of the main intermediate stops. Particular attention should be made to, uh, to the belt rods and braces, um, brass, brasses, all moving the parts with as far time as it will permit. It is difficult to lay down the exact procedure of the following in many cases with locomotive breakdowns because of the extent of the damage that actually occurred with the various depending on the speed of the other factors. The side rods, in addition with the distributing of the thrust for the piston equally with all the crank pins, also performs an important function to keeping the crank pins in, in line. The side rods break there is an possibility that the rods on the opposite side of the wheel buckle resulting in the bent, broken side rods and broken crank pins. While usually procedures to remove the corresponding section of rods opposite end of the broken rod, there are times which would cause the considerable delay of traffic. For this reason, the following general principles should be followed with the breakdown of the curve that requires the disconnect the removal of the rods. The main pin broken off the close to the hub. Remove the main and side rods on the disabled side. Cut off the driver brake. Throw the engine carefully to the siding or terminal with the main or side rods on the one side only. Back section of the side rod broken or knuckle pin loss out. Remove the broken rod and corresponding rod on the opposite side. Proceed to under or under own steam. Fro front section of side rod broken and engine with three pairing driving wheels. Remove the um, remove the main rod on all side rods. The disabled side. Cut off the driver brakes. Throw the engine carefully to the siding with the terminal with the main rod and side rods on animal side only. Front section of the side rod broken and the engine with four pair driving wheels. Remove the broken rod with the corresponding rod and the opens opposite side. Proceed under the own steam. Exemption to L1 um, locomotives. Remove the broken down broken rod cut out the, out of the driving brake. Tow the engine carefully to the side of the terminal. If corresponding with the rod opposite the side of the damage must be removed with the crank pins on the fronting of the driving wheel. will get on the line with the other crank pins and the striking of the crosshead. This will require the following to be done. Remove the bolt, the main rod, um, block both the crosshead screwing between the locking bolts and engines will have to be towed into a terminal. Front section of the side rod broken with the and engines with five pair, and dr pair of driving wheels. Take down the broken rod, cut off the driver brakes, tow the engine carefully to the siding and the terminal, correspond the rods opposite end of the damage cause to remove the crack pins on the front driving wheel will get out of the line while the other crank pins on the strike of the cross head. This ship will require the following to be done. One L one I one if the locomotives remove both the main bolts from both both the cross head screen between the locking bolts, engine will have to be so over the terminal. N1 lock motors remove both main rods, block, black lock of the crosshead for securing with the full of the forward position. But air can intermediate section with the side rod broken and on the engine with the five pair of driving wheels. Remove the broken parts corresponding rod opposite side. Also broken section with the side rod. Proceed under the own scene. If not possible to remove the corresponding rods with the opposite side of the following should be redone. Remove the broken rod. Broken side rod on the disabled side. Cut out the driver brakes. Tow the engine carefully to the side of the terminal. Intermediate section of the side rod broken or engine within the four pair of driving wheels. Remove the main rod on the disabled side. Remove all the side rods on the disabled side. If the rod is broken between the crank pins, the knuckle pins may hold the broken rod sufficiently into base placed and hold the engine to the siding or terminal without removing any of the ma rods cut out the out of the driver's place cut out the driver brakes tow the engine carefully siding or terminal Front engine intermediate section with the side rod and broken on the engine with a five pair of driving wheels. Remove the main rod of the disabled side. The, remove all the sides of the disabled side. If the rod is broken between the crank pins, the knuckle pins may hold the broken rod sufficient in the place of the toe of the engine to the side of the, of the terminal without removing any of the um, rods. Cut out the driver brakes. Tow the engine carefully to the siding of the terminal. All right, question chapter 20. What purpose of the crank pins? What does it mean about dead center? What is the engine of the top quarter? Top quarter, top quarter is the effect for the crank pins are not on the same distance apart with the length of the side of the rod. What is meant by the engine out of the tram? How are the crank pins on the one side of the engine located in relation to the other side of the opposite side? What is the effect of the engine being out of the quarter? If the hot pin or bearing develops, that what should be to be done? Why is the counterbalance necessary on the driving wheels? When are the, where is the counterbalance located? Where are the bad effects of the unbalanced wheels? What is the effect of removing the main and side rods from, the low, from a low Locomotive. What are the general type of the main rods and surface? Describe the strap end main rod. Describe the fork end main rod. Describe the solid end main rod. What is it necessary to keep the rod brasses keyed? How should it be done when they should be remain the rod brasses be reported closed and reproduced? What is the purpose of the side rods? 
What are the knuckle joints provided with the side rods? What are the names of the side rod section? A locomotive with three pair driving wheels. A locomotive with four pair driving wheels. A locomotive with five pair driving wheels. In the event of the breakdown of the locomotive, what is the most important factor to be observed? How many breakdowns be largely prevented? What should be done uh, if main pin is broken off the close of the hub? Back section of the side rod broken. The knuckle pin loss out. Front section of the side rod broken on the engine with a three pair driving wheel. Four second front section of the side rod broken on the engine with four pair driving wheels. Front section of the side rod broken with the L1 locomotive. The front, front section of the side rod broken with the, on the engine five pair driving wheels. Both front section of the side rods broken and damaged on level on um, 11 locomotives. Both front section of the side rods broken and were damaged on the N1 locomotives. Back intermediate section of the side rod broken on the engineer with a five pair, pair driving wheels. Intermediate section of the side rod broken on the engine with a five pair, four pair driving wheels. Front intermediate section of the side rod broken on the engine with five pair driving wheels. All right, figure, figure, figure 52, position of valve engine of the bottom quarter, reverse lever and center, cylinder and cock holes, water relief valve, piston, brake cylinder head port, front cylinder head port, piston, the steam edges of the valves, exhaust valve, chapter 21, valve gears.